All right, guys, what is up? I have a pretty interesting video for you guys. In this one, I'm going to be showing you a tool called Ferox Buster, which is really sick. This is a fast, simple, recursive discovery tool written in Rust is how they describe it. And basically think of, of Go Buster, but written in Rust. So it's actually even fast. This thing's crazy fast, but also think of, of Dir Buster, right? How you, how it did a lot of recursive or attempted to do recursive subdirectory brute forcing. However, it was so slow when you try to do it in recursive mode. So people that ran that back in the day, they used to almost always disable the recurse, tell it to not do recursive because otherwise it would take forever. Now this thing leverages the Rust programming language and in particular a crate called Tokyo, which basically libraries in Rust are called crates. Uh, Tokyo is used for asynchronous, um, you know, multi-threading basically, right? And it's crazy fast if you if you implement it right. And they definitely implemented it the right way. So I'm going to be grabbing this code and demoing it for you guys. This is gonna be, honestly, this is gonna be a tool that I use quite a bit. Here's a little demonstration as well. As you see here, they're, they're using it and it's um, brute forcing multiple subdirectories at once. Look at that. That's how quickly <laughs> you can potentially do this. So another reason that it might seem a lot even more faster than Go Buster than it actually is, though, to keep in mind, is because with Ferox Buster, it defaults to 50 threads. And Go Buster, if you don't tell it dash T 50 threads, I think it, um, I'm pretty sure it defaults to 20 threads. So keep that in mind as well when you're comparing the speed. Um, but... Yeah, I'll probably start using this tool a lot more um, on CTFs and things like that. And just in general, because it's super handy. So yeah, let me show you guys how to how to grab this tool and use it. Now, the first thing I want to show people is I want to make no assumptions in this video. I'm going to assume that you don't even have Rust installed on your system. If you don't, you can say like uh, install Rust, and it'll go, it'll take you to this Rust Lang org website here and literally all you have to do copy paste this into your terminal this curl command what that's going to do is install rust on your system now there's one more uh, thing you need to do uh, after it finishes it'll tell you to run a certain command uh, in order to add it to your path because if you don't add if you don't add it to your path then it's going to not know like when you type rusty cargo or rust up it's not going to know where that is so basically all your tools are going to be st installed in home dot cargo slash bin and uh yeah just make sure that you run the command that the terminal tells you to do after you run this command that way it adds it to your path otherwise you'll have to do that manually which can be kind of annoying but i already have it installed in my system and the way I know it's in my path is I can say which cargo, and I'll say that, say which rust up, which rust C. So everything's set up for me. But I'm going to show you what you have to do when you first grab this from GitHub because that can be confusing to a newcomer, someone who hasn't really messed around with rust before, but it's actually really simple. So I'm going to grab this the same way as I would grab any tool, right? So I say uh, git clone. Pass in the URL, you know, pretty straightforward so far. So if we go into Ferox Buster, I am met with uh, with this screen here. Now, there's a cargo, there's all these cargo files, all this stuff, what's going on, right? Uh, they have a install file. Maybe, maybe this will be the way to go as well. I, I didn't even see this. I, I installed it the other way. I'll, I'll show you the way I, do, I did it first, and then maybe we can look at this script to see. They might actually make this even easier for you. So, yeah, it looks like they have an install script. So, but it, but in general, I still want to show this because in general, this is uh, pretty good to know. So, if you're dealing a lot of times with um, other Rust programs, you got to compile the binary. So, you can say cargo build. And what that's going to do is go through 
this cargo.toml file and find all the dependencies and it's going to build the binary for you and you know pull in all the the crates that it needs right all the dependencies that it needs and the thing about rust is yeah the runtime is super fast but the build time takes forever so this is going to take quite a bit of time so i will see you guys when this is done actually all right, and now after what was three minutes and 27 seconds, we are now done. Now, yeah, it does take forever to build on Rust in general, but the nice thing is this is something we only need to do once. Once we have the binary, then we're pretty much good until a new version comes out and we want to download a new version or something like that. We're pretty much good. It's like a do-it-once type of thing. Now, the binary by default is in source target. So I'll go to source. Um... I believe target typically, or maybe it's target source. Hang on, let me let me refresh my memory here. Target, yeah, never mind. It's in uh, target and uh, debug, target debug, and then this is where the binary is. So Ferox Buster, do it with the uh, tag H, and yeah, here it is. So we can see all the flags here. Let's get an example of what we need in order to run this. So we have to do dash dash. For you and then URL for the URL. Let's give it some uh, some flags. I already have a box set up that we can test this on. So let's just run this as we would, and we can do dash n for no recursion. So if you want to run this just like a GoBuster or a Dir search, you just pass in the dash n flag, and uh, yeah, you're good to go. But the default behavior, I believe, is to follow the redirects. So let's see, if we want a, a word list, then I think that's dash W. So I'm going to pipe this in the less, and uh, yeah, let's see. So there's filter words. It's, uh, I've only used this like... Uh, <laughs> once so far so i'm having to refresh my memory on the actual flags but yeah okay here we go dash w is the is the word list and i know i read somewhere yeah default 50 threads so perfect we'll just run it with the default threads for now we'll keep things simple enough so if we say ferox buster and we'll use the same word list we like to use so user share sec list discovery web content in uh, raft small words dot text and then URL will say use this box that I have set up here and <clears throat> extensions I forgot if that's a I think it's a in this case I think it might be a dash e but it could be x I don't know let's say we're dealing with PHP because normally we are right so let me Oh, right. So the URL needs to be the, I think the URL needs to be the final thing. Oh, so dash E is for extract links, I think. So let's try X. Yeah, so it ends up being X. And uh, I think we need to specify the protocol as well here. Yep. And so we see, look, we're actually brute forcing on multiple things at once. So it finds images. So now it's going to brute force on images uh, inside the images folder, right? It found assets. So it's going to look in the assets folder. So that's how it kind of works, right? It's like, okay, it found JS. Now it's going to look in assets JS and so on and so forth. And then this bar on the left side here will show you the progress on each of those folders. And of course we can speed this up if we simply give it more threads as well. And then up here you can see in a nice color co uh, coordinated way, which allows you to really, uh, that's one thing, another thing I really like about this is you can very quickly see which ones are 200s, which ones are 301s because it actually color coordinates them for you. Now, this site might not have been the best one to test it out on. We see we're getting a lot of errors here. And, and also it is um, taking a little bit of time here to make some progress. But yeah, this is, uh, you know, we, we could also kind of tweak this as well. 
you know, we give it more threads, however we want to do things. So if we say like 80 threads, then we can do it even quicker. And uh, so on and so forth here. Now, I have seen this thing go really fast on certain websites when I, the, the other time that I used it, it, it did go pretty fast. So it really depends, right, on, um, on the site as well. But, uh, yeah, we could always run this with the dash N and just look at, at one. You know, let's go ahead and try that as well. So if I, if I do tell it not to do recursive, and we're going to see it just run on this. And also keep in mind, we did pass in uh, the extension PHP. So it's going to look, it's going to take double the time than it normally would because it's looking for, uh, trying to brute force all those files as well. And it looks like that guess was correct, that kind of blind guess. Uh, well, potentially, potentially. But uh, yeah, you can see here as it's, um, it's updating the progress here as far as um, when this is going to be done. That's another thing that's really cool about this tool. When you're running GoBuster or DirSearch, um, you don't really know. Well, I mean, you do know when you, you do have like a progress percent, percentage, but it's nice to have this visual indicator. I, I, I quite like it. And I'm, I'm a big fan nowadays of programs that are like color coordinated. You know, that's why I like WinPs and LinPs so much is because they color coordinate things. It makes things really, uh, really easy on the eyes and really easy to quickly gather the relevant information because anything you can do to speed up your efficiency, right? That's going to give you more time. Cause like I said, especially if you're going for OSCP or something, you think you have all this time, you really have a lot less time than, uh, than you might think. So anything to speed that up is a great asset in my opinion. So yeah, I mean, we see here, like this thing is already almost finished. And, uh, I do think this was like a little bit slower of a site compared to what I dealt with. I don't even remember what box I used this on originally. But uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and give it a try for yourself. Um, Ferox Buster. Uh, this is by EPI052. And yeah, I'm, I'm really keen on a lot of these Rust tools. I, I, I really quite like a lot of um, what people have started to build with uh, the Rust programming language so far. And I would love to see, honestly, I would love to see a Hydra in Rust, right? Like a remake of Hydra using Rust. I think that'd be really cool. Because personally, I don't really like uh, Hydra that much. But I have to use it sometimes because it's the only tool that I really know of to uh, try to brute force web forms. But if any of you guys know of a tool, another alternative to Hydra to brute force web forms... Um, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to check out a tool like that, but I would love for someone to build something like that in Rust. I think it'd be really cool. And uh, yeah, I will. Uh, you know, I hope you guys gained a lot of um, insight on in this video, and maybe this is a tool that you're going to check out and you know try for yourself. If you like it, go ahead and add it to your tool belt. If not, then no harm, no foul. And uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and hit the like button as well. And if you want to get into some more technical content, maybe use this tool uh, as you follow along with the technical content yourself. Uh, go ahead and check out what you need to know for OSCP. There's plenty of technical content there. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.